Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. And uh, today we are going to talk about one very important evergreen Java interview question that people will ask you. It's not about DS algo and any string based questions or array based questions. It's about the pure Java program where you have to create a student class or let's say employee class and you have to find out that uh, give me a student name who is having the highest marks or highest number. Give me an employee, give me all the employee names who are having the salary less than 5000 or 10,000, something like that. So it's not about SQL query, it's about the Java code that you have to write. So it's a very evergreen interview question. People will ask you just to check your knowledge on uh, list, on Java objects, on constructors, getter and setters, such things that we will be using in this particular concept. Okay, so what exactly I'm going to do that? I'm going to take one simple example. Let's say I'm going to create in this particular package. I'm going to create a student class over here. Fine. This will become like a student uh, Java class, like a POSO class that we are going to use and do not create any main method in it. And in this particular student class, for example, let's see what is the student name. So these are the private variables and uh, student name will be, let's see something like this. And then I'm writing that uh, what is the student uh, role number and then I'm going to create a constructor over here. So I'll do one thing, go to source and directly generate the constructor, constructor using fields, select all these private variables to create the constructor and uh, the constructor got created, remove the super keyword that we are not using it. So this is the constructor and I'm going to create some getters also. We don't need any setters because when we create the object of this class, that time only I'll be passing the values for these uh you know variables so i'll do one thing i simply create only getters so that at the runtime we will get the value so i simply go to generate getters select all later on so simply create the generate button and uh, set i'm going to remove it guys so let me remove all the sets from okay so this is a class format that we have used very simple class okay like that now what exactly i'm going to do that i'm going to create another class let's see uh, student test or st test a student having the main method and then what I want so uh, what exactly I'm going to do that that I'm going to create multiple objects of the student class for example let's see student s1 which is equal to a new student that I have created but when you create the object that time you have to say that okay what is the name of the student let's see the name of the student is a uh, Tom Role number is one. He got, let's see, out of 190 marks. Age is, uh, let's see, uh, 15, something like this. So likewise, I'm going to create, let's see, around uh, four or five students. One, two, three, four, and five. So these are the students I have created. Five student objects that I have created. Now I have to hold all these objects, store all these objects. So I simply say, add all the student objects, array list. Right. So how will you do that? So what exactly we have to do? We have to create one array list over here. So first I'm going to create one array list. So see, or you can start with the list of what, what kind of generics you want to give. It's not about a string generics or integer guys. This is what people are expecting at the time of interview that I want to store all the student objects. So I have to say that this list will hold all the students. So you have to pass the student class over here and let's see, I simply create, this is my student a list is equal to new array list and then I simply say this is my a student list that I have created you import array list and a list from the java.util package now in this particular student list I'll keep adding it so I simply write dot add method what kind of value that we want to add I want to add the first student that is s1 student right so likewise I can simply add now simple student got added so do not write a string or integer over here this is what the question is all about that you have to add all the student objects to the array list and then when the array list is available what do you want so first of all i want to check that in this particular array list how many students are there so i simply say that total uh, simple say that yeah what is my array list my array list is the student list dot size right so when you run it so let's see what happens so total number of students, we have five students are there in the class. Now I want to print all these students. So how will you iterate a list? So you can use a simple for loop over here. So what kind of data we have? Let's say I'm going to use a for each loop. We have a student type of data in this list. So instead of writing 
uh, string or integer we will write a student over here let's say I'm creating a student reference variable s and what is the list name the list name is student list which is holding all the students this is the way we write the for each loop right now what exactly I'm going to do that see if you write it like this system dot out and print the value of s so s is representing what it will go to the student list it will go to each and every object s1 which is representing this object so when you print the object like that what exactly it will give it to you when you run it see it is giving you some object reference number over here mem whatever that the student at this particular memory location it's not giving you the exact student names that we have added like tom peter lisa and all so how will you solve this problem to solve this problem inside the student class we have to override one method each and every class in java there's a student class also is the child of object class so from the object class we have to override one math two string method we have to override right so i'm going to override the two string method from the object class so right click on it and simple go to source and see this generate two string method and uh, with the help of all the fields yes and click on generate so you will see that at the rate overwrite a two string method got generated and uh, you can see this particular method that when you call this particular method give me the return in this particular string format like that simple when you run it again it's still now if you see that okay it's giving you the student name equal to tom roll number equal to this so this is the importance of two string method you can use it over here like that fine so automatically now it will pick and then now it will start printing uh, because we have given the implementation of the two string and uh, it will instead of uh, giving that uh, uh, string object value it will give you the complete values which are available in this particular object now this is fine if you really want to use the streams streams also will be powerful and will be super easy to do that i simply write okay fine in this particular list apply a stream and then do what give me all the student names so i simply write a for each create one uh, lambda e supply it to the system dot out print talent and print the value of e so what will happen if you run it see again it's giving you the same student also from here so with the help of uh, stream for each loop uh, method also you can simple do that who is uh, give me all the students or give me a particular student all the students who are having the student marks uh, which is a uh, greater than 80 so greater than 80 we have only not equal to 80 greater than 80 means only tom having 90 marks lisa and robbie right so how will you get it so in this case what exactly you are going to do that i simple apply a stream once again so i simple say okay dot stream and then i'll apply a filter over here right guys so i simple say okay fine apply this particular filter and then what exactly i'm going to do that i create one e pass it to the lambda and e dot i'll put a condition on marks where marks is greater than 80 actually so on the basis of that i'll apply a filter and then i'll use my for each loop once again just to print the values so again i supply e to the system dot out of print ln and then what exactly you want to print so i want to print e dot c this is the advantage of all the getters i simply say give me all the names fine so let's uh, or all the names along with that now let's run it again see it's giving you tom lisa and robbie got 100 more than 80 marks that is what exactly it's written over here so you can put a condition like that okay and you can filter it out on the basis of streams and everything on the basis of condition in your stream you can simply use that right now i want that okay uh, give me the student name right who got the highest marks then how will you get it simple stream with the stream it will be very easy so i simple apply uh, once again dot stream and then what exactly i'm going to do that and uh, i simple say okay fine you do a map over here and then supply e to what uh, e dot get marks like that and then you find out the maximum marks over here so there is a max function over here and max means what type of data max will be it will be integer so i simple write integer colon colon and then i'll be using one method that is called compare method and then dot get method is there so this dot get method would exactly it's returning this method is giving you an integer it's saying we will give you the highest 
uh, from this particular whatever the marks that the stream marks that we are getting i'll be finding the maximum marks and then i'll give it to you and then i'll store let's see highest mark hm is equal to this so this will be my uh, simple uh, stream line i'm going to use it over here see these are the methods i'm just writing in separate line so you will get it and i'll do one thing i'll just print this particular hm and then you run it so let's see who what is the highest mark is equal to 100 for robbie that we have received now what you can do that this particular hm that we have got so what exactly i want to know that okay who is the student who got the highest marks so same hm as a correlation you can use it over here in the next stream student list dot once again you write a stream dot a filter you can use it and you supply this e once again and get the student marks so simple say get marks which is equal to equal to what hm you know if you really want to write a runtime program or something first you get the marks and supply to the next stream filter which is equal to equal to hm then do what then for each again you write a for each loop whatever you are collecting supply it to the system dot outer print ln e over here so let's see who got the highest marks so i simple run so see the <clears throat> highest mark is equal to 100 and the student name is robbie roll number equal to 4 marks equal to 40 and age equal to 15 so we are getting the complete information about that particular student right who got the highest marks like that so this is the simple a filter you can you can use it with the help of streams so streams will help you a lot in such kind of uh, questions guys easy to write easy to understand easy to readable that's it very simple create a poso class maintain your getters constructors and everything see if we're here we're using the concept of encapsulation also this is the private variable and these are the private public getters we are using it and then giving the access via the public variables for my private variables and private variables i'm going to initialize with my constructor with the help of this keyword simple so simple typical java program that we are using it so we are using the concept of constructors encapsulations poso array list array list storing the values in an object right how will you store the different objects the class objects inside the constructor sorry inside the array list this is what we are using it and then different uh, filters and operations we are performing on that particular list that is a very popular question people will ask you exactly this question actually four years back uh, or five years back uh, interviewer asked me at a time, uh, you know at a time of interview in the first round with walmart actually and still people are asking these questions a very simple thing actually so thank you so much guys thanks for watching navin automation labs i hope it's clear i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you and please please subscribe to the channel if you are liking such three 